Hi, my name is Sharon Slade and I'm from SLS Marketing Consultancy. Join me on the Online Prosperity Show to talk about strategic marketing and the importance of community. Now, welcome to the Online Prosperity Show and I'm your host, Prosper Tarovinga. And boy, do we have a cracker of a guest today. Our special guest hails from the United Kingdom. Sharon, Sharon, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Thank you so much for having me today. It's lovely to be here. Well, absolutely. I just, um, you know, hope we're going to get the best time on the show today because I know you are a wealth of information when it comes to marketing, when it comes to personal life and everything else. And I've just realized you've been married for 18 years. So maybe we should also put that to the things that you, we are probably going to be talking about. But I digress. Now, with us today is Sharon, and she um, comes from a company called SLS Marketing Consultancy. Now, she's been doing this for over 20 years, um, and her marketing experience has helped a lot of small to medium businesses grow and prosper. And as you will notice, uh, Sharon is actually passionate about helping small business owners like yourself demystify marketing and achieve new levels of success. And I'm hoping in this episode, we're going to explore the importance um, you know, of measurement in marketing and the power of automated email campaigns, and also Sharon's unique approach to personalized marketing strategy. So join us as we dive into the world of marketing with Sharon Slade on the Online Prosperity Show. I mean, Sharon, I could go on and on. You were saying you, um, you know, needed somebody to tell your husband <laughs> to, to, so that you could stop talking too much. But I think I win the cup for that. While you're here, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you actually got started with SLS Marketing uh, Consultants. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, oh, I'm going to age myself here. But um, out of uni, took a year off, decided, didn't quite know what I wanted to do. Um, and actually found a job that I thought sounded really interesting. And actually it was for a direct mail manager. Remember back in the days when people actually used to send posts? It is coming back into fashion though. So if you have a teenager, I bet they've never received a letter. Um, and I got the job and I worked in a big corporate for about 16, 17 years. And I worked around the business, different brands, different positions, and had the fortune to do a little bit of everything. So, I mean, I'm talking back in the days before there was email, before there was digital marketing, before SEO was a thing. Um, and I have done everything from press inserts to uh, TV advertising, to loyalty marketing, you name it, I've probably done it. Um, and that is really fortunate position to be in as a marketer because usually you specialize in one but actually my career has allowed me to have access to all of those key areas and I decided pre-covid remember those days remember that time before then okay. to actually branch out and go alone um and that's what I did you know I stepped away from corporate and I set up SLS marketing consultancy and the vision was really to take everything I've learned from working in big business with big budgets and big spends and lots of activity and take those learnings and give them to smaller businesses who don't have those big budgets to test and learn for some of that stuff. You know, so being able to bring that to small businesses and going, look, you might want to spend a little bit of money on this, but I can tell you over the years I've spent hundreds of thousands or millions or tens of thousands on this activity and it's really difficult to get it to work actually you're better off putting your money here and that's really what SLS is all about it's about helping small businesses cut through and find a way to market that's right for them um so yep so we've been running now for probably about four years now um, and it's been an amazing journey so I'm really delighted and I'm really fortunate to be able to do something I absolutely love. Fantastic. And congratulations. I mean, obviously they say not a lot of businesses go past the three year mark, but you've managed to do that in the midst of COVID and everything else that comes yeah. along with it. That's a remarkable feat. Now, Sharon, you transitioned from the whole corporate life to running your own business. And I, I can imagine that can be a bit challenging. What were some of the factors that actually 
made you first of all to take the leap and yeah. then second of all how did you then sort of build some sort of a community around yourself during the process yeah absolutely and I think you touched on something really important there community which is, is very important to me but I mean I have been working in corporate I'm going to say something like 16 17 years um and to be perfectly frank it got too much too much pressure too much expectation and I had a breakdown and I don't shy away from it. I think it's really important that we talk about mental health. And that breakdown really led me to evaluate what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And to be honest, I was making millions and millions of pounds for other people and giving them my life. I was working, you know, I was up till 2 a.m., up again at 6, didn't really see my family. And I had known for a while that I should have moved on. Can't deny it. But I'd been there so long. It was like it was like a family. And that that breakdown was a really pivotal moment for me. And it wasn't easy and it was tough and there was lots of tears and there was lots of therapy. Um, and I think it's important that we, you know, we talk about mental health and therapy and it's not a taboo subject. You know, I'm a perfectly capable woman who was doing well in her profession, but just wasn't supported properly. So I then sort of dabbled with a few things, but my passion is in marketing. So I, I started really slowly. I'm not going to pretend I just went from, you know, breakdown to a successful business. I started slowly, found my feet, and I just started to And then I started networking, and it just boosted my confidence. And little bits just had that snowball effect. You know, oh, I'll help you just write this blog or I'll help you with your social media became, hang on, guys, I can do so much more. And it gave me my confidence back, if I'm really honest. Um, and that was down to me learning to believe in myself again, but also by surrounding myself with people who were keen for me to do well. And I've noticed that really around the small business community. You, can, you find a group of people who actually want to see others succeed. Um, people talk about oh it must be really competitive loads of people do marketing it's like yes they do but we all offer something different and actually if you surround yourself with good people you learn from each other you grow with each other you can learn to depend on each other and you know our, after this actually I'm meeting up with a fellow marketing person when we're, we're not in competition we work collaboratively something she does I can't do something I do she can't do so we work together and it works really well for our clients because then they get the best of everything. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And, and thank you so much for sharing that uh, story of yours, you know, when you transition, because um, a lot of people just hang on, especially to jobs that are no longer fulfilling them. And I really feel sorry for all those people during COVID that were told that their jobs were non-essential and yet they're still showing up at those places. Um, I, it must really be taking a toll, um, you know, on their personal um, mindsets and everything else. Now, while we're still sort of maybe touching up on this subject, because there's a lot of burnout and there's a lot of, yeah. um, you know, uh, mental health that's going on with other people, what, what sort of, um, you know, measures did you take yourself to really get yourself out of that? Because, you know, yes, that did okay, but what, yeah. what is it that you specifically did, Sharon, um, that then put you on the straight and narrow? Yeah, so for me specifically, I asked for help immediately. You know, I was burnt out, I was crying, I was exhausted. So I asked for help. I, I at the weekend, I just broke down. So Monday morning, I was okay, I'm phoning my doctors, I'm phoning, we had a helpline at work, so, um, you know, so for, um, for care, and I phoned them, and I just, I don't know what to do, and actually, that was a hard conversation, because I couldn't really articulate, because I was so emotional, but I think that ability to ask for help, and it's tough, it's not easy, um, but I knew, I just spent the last two days sobbing, like, literally just sobbing um not being able to talk to my husband or my kids um about anything deep and meaningful so I think the ability to ask for help and knowing where to go for help and that that can be quite difficult fortunately my employee they did have a employee well-being program so and we all had access to that telephone number it was on our you know it was on my laptop I had a, a little business card with it on I had a leaflet with it on and having speaking to those people made me realize I wasn't a failure 
I hadn't let myself down. It was, you know, lots of things that had combined for me for that to happen. So, um, and I have no shame in saying, you know, I was on antidepressants for about a year. I did 12 therapy sessions. And then I learned to open up and talk to those around me. Um, and actually, when you start talking, you then realize that lots of other people have been in your position, different extreme extremities. Um, and everyone's experience is slightly different. But actually, that that feeling of, you know, just, I just felt rubbish. I can't even think of a better word to say. I just felt like I wasn't worthy. I wasn't capable. I'd put my life and soul into this. And yet I wasn't able to perform. Um, so therefore, you know, that ability to get that help and talk to people was just immeasurable. And then, and then that started with friends and family, but then it becomes business people. So being honest with business people, I found really helped, you know, look, oh, why haven't you, you know, been working for the last few months? Actually, you know, I've had to take a breather for my own mental well-being. And I, you know, I really invested in mindfulness. I remember my very first therapy session, my therapist said, you know, go into your garden and you'll and hear the birds sing. I was like, I've got no birds around here. Got no birds around here. <laughs> well, sat in my garden. Oh my gosh, the birds do not stop singing where I am. Okay, so it was that ability to just breathe, and I think that's something that we all need to make time to do. Even if we feel like we're in good mental health right now, we want to keep that way. So find that time to breathe. Find in our support community, our tribe, as I like to call it. Um, and not being afraid to say, hey, guys, I'm just feeling a bit rubbish today. And I'm not, I'm just going to step back from work today and I'm going to go for a walk. I mean, I've got a great dog. Well, great today because she's not barking. Sometimes she barks a lot. Um, but, you know, finding those things, you know, a great walk, a good book, just sitting there and listening to some sort of meditation music, you know, just, just some self-care. Nice. And my therapist also said, there's nothing wrong with doing nothing. Absolutely. So, yeah, resonates with me. So. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, just looking at you now, before we started the show, you were just talking about how you and uh, Jake, your son, went out to play golf and also Ellie does uh, the singing out there. And, you know, the reason why I actually connected with you was because you are now a head of a community network that I um, Absolutely, yeah. have been connecting with. So that that has been such a transformation from what you are spelling out there. And I really appreciate you for, um, you know, being open and upfront with that sort of um, uh, statement. Now, what, what sort of um, advice would you maybe give other people that might be in that sort of situation and don't quite realize that, hey, there's light at the end of the tunnel there. And given that you have really come full circle and congratulations on your wedding, by the way, that also could have uh, gone under the bus based on the situation that you were talking about. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, th I think when you're, in the situation where you are you're beaten and broken and burnt out you know it deep down but you try and keep going and I think if you're in that position and you think I can keep going just take yourself out of the situation for a moment and just think about where you're spending your time and what's important to you and just talk to those around you because they'll know they'll see the difference in you you know I would be going to work crying you know, my I would be snappy and grumpy at home. And you're right, how I've ma managed to, you know, remain married for 18 years, no idea. My husband's the same. Don't tell him that, though. He's not listening to this, I tell you that much. But it is really important to just, again, breathe. Is this really what I want? You know, I was getting, you know, working till two, getting up at six, not getting any recognition, being told I wasn't doing enough. It's like, how much more can I do? You know, you have more of me than my family. And I think work is really important and I love what I do, but your family is just, you know, your family and friends are everything. So, yeah. Absolutely. We definitely need the people around us because then that gives worth to all the uh, hard work that we're putting out there and things yeah. of that nature. Now, obviously you have 
then got an app and started working with these small to medium businesses. And I'm thinking your experiences have actually gotten you to be much more, um, you know, empathetic or to actually have the emotional intelligence for you to understand the day to day that happens with a small to medium business, because everything that a small to medium business has to look after, they have to, um, you know, look after it. When you were at your previous job, you had a number to call. These guys don't have, yeah. um, you know, a number to call and things of that nature. So what, yeah. what sort of support are you giving, um, you know, your clients just in case they show up, um, they're battered and they're probably um, not aware of what the next thing would be to actually do so that they can start thriving themselves? Yeah, I I think find find something, someone to help you, you know, find someone to talk to. Um, and that can be, you know, a professional service. Um, but there's also lots of websites out there. There's lots of collateral out there. Um, so find what works for you. And actually, that that's something that really runs through in everything I do is find what works for you. What works for me may not work for you, Prosper, but it may do. So actually find what works for you. And that's the same in business as well. You know, um, whatever you do, it's got to be right for you in your business. So I think that's always key is there's lots and lots of resources out there. You might have to do a bit of digging and you might have to try a few. And if you find a few and you're put off, don't be there, just not the right ones for you. There will be something. And, uh, you know, open up to some people because actually some of your friends, colleagues, etc., you know, will yeah, will have been in this situation. So, you know, when I go into small businesses, it's really important that I'm really open. Um, I approach everything with a very realistic um, approach, what can be done. You know, marketing is such a vast, such a vast scope. People go, I want to do all of this stuff. It's like, okay, so tell me a little bit more about your objectives, your resources, et cetera. It's like, okay, let's find what's going to work for you and let's get your marketing started. And then let's look at all these other things. So it's, it's that sense of realism, I think, you know, um, and that's the same, you know, with your mental health, you know, be realistic about what you can achieve. So. Yeah. Fantastic. So you bring up something that is of interest. Um, which is basically telling small to medium businesses to work with what's good for them. I quickly just remember the lesson that we were taught when we were growing up, they used to say, put your hand up like this, no two fingers on the same hand are of the same height. So a lot of people try and dabble in a lot of yeah. marketing, um, you know, strategies and activities, and they end up uh, doing what you call spraying and praying with their marketing. Yeah. Now, my question for you now is you worked in the whole traditional marketing uh, sector and now the digital marketing sector. So we can actually call you the tradigital queen. <laughs> is that oh, I love it. I'm <laughs> coining that one. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So, so what, where do you think, um, you know, people get it wrong, especially when you say everybody's trying to do everything, um, yeah. you know, when, when, when it comes to their marketing? I, th I think there's a couple of things, actually. I think there's the people who see what other people are doing in their industry and they might have been running for 20 years. You know, they just don't know. And they're like, they're, they've got a YouTube channel and they've got, you know, this fantastic website with, you know, uh, people giving testimonials on video. And they're also at every event I go to and they're on every networking session. And it's like, that's good, but they may well have built to that. So I think that's one thing is... Comparing yourself to others can be difficult. Get inspiration from others, absolutely. But trying to replicate, you don't know the journey they've been on and actually you're setting yourself up to fail a wee bit. You know, so actually let's, you know, let's be clear on what it is we want to achieve. But then there's also the other side of this, which is also what's right for your audience and what's right for you. Um, so, you know, I've had people come up to me and go, oh, my grandson's told me all about Instagram. I'm, I, I should be on Instagram. It's like, okay, so tell me a little bit about your audience. Okay. Okay. So they're 60 year old men who, okay, <laughs> be the right environment for you right now, but let's keep an eye on the channel because as we all know, all these channels evolve. So when I work with small businesses, it's really key to understand, okay, what are your objectives? You know, what is that five year business plan, you know? And therefore, we don't have to do it all, all at once. 
And actually, sometimes, you know, when when people try and do that, that's when they fall over. So be realistic. Look at who your audience are and where they are. Um, and actually, they might be in a few places because actually by people, we are in a few places. But pick some pick a couple that are your primaries and work those really well. And once you have those as well oiled machines, then reach out and start to do more. I'm a real believer in don't spread yourself too thin, because, again, not great for your mental health, but also means you won't do you won't have the time to do everything really well. So, you know, when I work, I mean, I'm working with some people in B2B um, finance at the moment. So their audience is primarily on LinkedIn and they also do a lot of um, the lead generation campaign on YouTube. So it's like, okay, well, let's let's focus on those. Let's, yeah, you know, so let's put your Twitter and things to the side. Then let's just pause some of those events at the moment. And maybe we know there's a finance event in October. That's what we've got our eye on now. We haven't got the finance events next week. It's the finance event in October. And let's work with what we've got. And then once they're running and we've got some automated processes in place, then now you've got some brain space to think of, okay, what's the other thing we want to add in? And I find that's how I'm getting the best results for, for my clients is being realistic, looking at where their audience are and doing a couple of things really well rather than 20 things half-heartedly. And that's not, they don't have the ambition to do it well. It's just not possible, you know? There's five of them or 10 of them in the team. They're not marketing specialists, you know, and, and I can help with that, you know, and I can do that. And I have a team of, you know, associates that I work with that can support on that. But do a few things really well, you know, um, and, when, and whatever that may be, you know, it may be events, you know, there's one industry I work with which is really heavily events driven. Um, there's a, a couple that are still quite traditional in terms of print media. I know that still does exist. Gives me a little bit of happiness. Goes back to my first days, um, but it is about finding what works um, and get, getting inspiration from other people, but not, you know, thinking you have to do everything that Joe around the corner is doing because they're everywhere you go. So they've been going for twenty years. They've built up to that. That's where you will be, and it won't take you twenty years. It'll take you five. But let's do it in a staged, managed approach. So yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I really appreciate you sort of um, elaborating on that because a lot of people want to dabble in so many different, um, yeah. you know, social media platforms or marketing strategies. And I have this statement when people show up in my in, 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 in my space, I'm like, you can't climb the ladder of success with your hands full. You know what yeah. I mean? You've got your hammer there, you've got your nails in there and you're still trying to climb the ladder. You know, you, you will definitely fall. But um, I sort of saw a bit of a sparkle in your eyes when you were talking about your clients there. Now, can you just share with us a success story uh, of a small business that you've worked with where your marketing strategies yeah. um, and efforts have actually, you know, resulted in significant growth and uh, maybe you've increased their absolutely. revenue or improved yeah, their client retention? Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, there's a few that come to mind, but probably my most, my most the one I feel most passionate about probably is um, one of my first clients that I took on board and we managed to um, increase turnover um, hugely in the first year. Actually, we doubled turnover by the end of year one. And that isn't just down to me. It is a team effort. It's about them being very clear on their proposition. And it's about them being the team being very clear on how marketing is going to help. But actually they were a company who were, who were growing. And then they had tried a few marketing strategies with, a few people but maybe the wrong people so just bear with me on this for example they've had a website designer in who is great at their task but they've tried to ask them to do their marketing strategy not saying that website designer is not very good in their craft but actually marketing strategy is a different kettle of fish so it didn't work and actually they saw they launched a new website it was going well but then their figures started to go down and down and down and down so said so, you know we're looking for somebody else and somebody recommended me so I went and had a meeting with a team it's like tell me what's gone on and then tell me where you want to go and tell me a bit about your product tell me about who's buying it so I did all those discovery questions and then it's like okay right let, let's focus 
let's get back to okay the website so the website for them is really really key as it is for many many businesses so, so let's get this website performing okay so you know we looked at our google analytics we looked at our google search console um we started to get a feel for what was performing and what wasn't and where we needed improvement and we worked on that and actually these are a really unusual client in all of their traffic comes from google um or any other you know Bing, Yahoo, whoever, but primarily from Google. Um, and it didn't matter what activity you did, people always went to Google to find them. So we also did a lot of work on LinkedIn as their primary social media channel, um, B2B um, industry, so and services, highly relevant. But what we were seeing is, oh, we're not getting a lot of engagement on LinkedIn. But all those people were looking at LinkedIn and then going and Google searching them. So, for example, th these people work across a number of sectors and we would break that activity down into sectors. So maybe it's highly pertinent to cover. I'm going to say a sector like, like a dental. OK, so dental is a really key sector for them. And there are two times of the year where dental is really important in the industry. So we would ramp up our activity in there and I'd be looking at things like the LinkedIn posts and things going Engagement's not great, but we, you know, the the people's view, uh, profile views seem okay. What's happening? And then I go and look at the Google stats and the Search Console stats, and it would tell me that people are seeing it and then going and googling afterwards um, and finding us there. So it's like, oh, okay, this is a little bit unusual because most people you see a direct correlation, you know, and you can see on your analytics that people have come straight from social. No, not with this client. Um, so that didn't, so that made, okay, so what we're doing on the social channel is working, just not, you know, as linear as we may like, shall I say. So then we're like, okay, well, let's, let's you know, let's see how it performs for another sector. So again, another time of the year, March is really good for gardening. Um, so we looked at that as a sector. And again, lots of posts. And actually this one, we dabbled a little bit in Facebook because that was right for that sector as well. Again, no direct correlation between, you know, Google Analytics wasn't telling me that people were coming from these social channels. However, when I looked at my Google stats, they were telling me that people go, increased number of people were searching these things. Um, and then when we spoke to them, you know, as part of the discovery, it was, oh, yeah, I saw you on LinkedIn. And then later that night, I popped onto Google and said, ah, okay. Um, but so with it, so I've digressed a wee bit, but let me bring it back on track. So with this client, we went back to basics. We got their website solid. We started to update um, and tweak, you know, meta descriptions, add blog content and et cetera regularly. And then we got their primary social channel working really well. And then we added in additional social channels dependent on the sectors. Um, and yeah, and after one year, um, you know, honestly, they I called it, always called it the smiley face grass. You know, when we started, it was high, well, it had been high and then dipped. And then by the time I finished, it was a nice big smiley face, slightly wonky because the all the web stats and sales figures followed that trend. So 12 months later, we double turnover, which was phenomenal. And then now um, I continue to work with them and we're looking at, yes, continually to increase turnover, but diversification of the services they offer. And therefore, again, what channels they use. So, yeah, one example. And I know I've talked a lot. So sorry, Brosper. <laughs> Fantastic. No, I was just in, uh, you know, engrossed in this story. Now, Sharon, obviously that, that's a remarkable achievement and congratulations. And I can only imagine what would have been happening during that time because LinkedIn was predominantly a resume site. It, it, dis yeah, it wasn't designated for transactions. So it's only right that the uh, customer was using that sort of a channel for discovery and then using other channels. So this just brings about the importance of just having some sort of structure in your multi, um, you know, um, marketing approach. But in any case, if people are going to want those smiles, um, you know, in, in, in their analytics, what would be the best way to get a hold of you there, Sharon? LinkedIn, you'll always find me on LinkedIn. Absolutely. That's my that's my place I like to hang out with. Uh, that's where uh, my potential clients are, my existing clients, and also my community of support are on LinkedIn. So yeah, I, I find for me doing what I do, B2B, professional services primarily, um, LinkedIn is really, you know, where I am. So I always say to people, you're you're more likely to get me there than you are on email because LinkedIn is just constantly there on my 
you know, on my laptop or on my phone, you know, when I'm commuting and things, it's just, yeah, LinkedIn is, is the idle way. Fantastic. And um, for those that are watching, um, Sharon also runs a um, networking event. Can you just also tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I run Evolution Virtual Networking, which is a virtual networking session, as it says on the tin, runs every uh, Thursday, well, every fortnight, fortnightly every Thursday. Yes. Every other Thursday, shall we say, um, um, UK time, 8 a.m., runs till 9.30. And the premise of this is about building a community of small business owners who want to learn and grow together. So there are, you know, there are no lockouts. There's no membership. There's no fees. There's, there's no barriers, essentially. And it's a networking group where you get out as much as you put in. Um, and the sessions are really around, you know, we have topical speakers to help people grow their knowledge we have lots of breakout rooms so people get to know each other and we really work on growing our referral network we know that we may not do business with each other you know in that room so to speak but we all know a lot of people you know and actually if you put all our connections together we're not talking about we all know you know a couple of thousand we know tens and tens potentially hundreds of thousands of people and you know, that person you may be meeting on this networking session could be one step away from your perfect client. You know, that person that's going to elevate your business to the next level. Um, but it's a great community, really friendly, always have a little bit of a giggle, you know, work hard, play hard. Um, and no questions, silly. You know, we have just an amazing community of people who just want to see each other do well you know we have lots of people from the same industries aboard there's no competitiveness you know it's just okay this person's not right for me but I think they could be right for you um oh I'm stuck so I was stuck with GA4 reporting and I put it on our little community and someone's like Sharon I'll put someone on it for you so you know it's it's back to what I said earlier is, I mean, you know, that community, having a community around you as a small business owner is really important. And I, and I think I, I've mentioned it before is, you know, a bit like that t- terminology, you know, it takes a village to raise a baby. It takes a community to get your small business off the ground. And you should never be shy of asking for help, collaborating with other people, um, because you'll get where you need to get a lot quicker and, you know, less stress, which is absolutely key. Absolutely. And I really appreciate you having welcomed uh, me to your uh, networking. I'm still trying to get the times aligned <laughs> since we've yeah. lost an hour, but I'm I'm working hard to make sure that it aligns so I can join you guys uh, every fortnight. And I really uh, appreciate you extending that invitation, um, you know, to our community that can come and join um, and then they Absolutely. can commiserate with you guys. Um, I, I must say it's, it's, it's a very brilliant, brilliant, uh, environment and really I'm trying to work around <laughs> to make sure that our times align but obviously thank you so much for that invitation but I don't think you would be uh, open to an invitation to Australia soon given your escapade um, uh, in Manly with the sharks there yeah you know I you know I'm really fortunate that I have been to Australia a number of times and actually I have uh, my brother lives there I've got nieces and nephews in Australia so I you know I'm fortunate I, I come to Australia fairly frequently um but yes I was in the water at Manly Beach happily you know swimming away and an alarm went off I was like what's that and my brother had lived in Australia by 10 years at this point he went shark alarm <laughs> honestly never seen me run so fast and I know this is, you know, audible or not visible, but I am not built for running. So, <laughs> yeah, um, Man Beach, has, which has always been one of my favourite, um, yeah, scared the bejeebas out of me and I run very fast. <laughs> but it made great, a great story for the kids to say when they came back to school that the bull shark was right near where we were swimming. And my mum ran really fast and looked really silly. Absolutely. I thought maybe the alarm was cheering you on for being the greatest swimmer. Because <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was definitely faster than I've ever been before. Let me tell you that. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, now uh, Sharon, I mean, obviously you worked in between, like we mentioned, the traditional, now the digital. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we're now stepping into yet another phase of marketing that just seems to be, um, you know, a, a dawn of something 
new that's that's sort of coming up. So what are your future goals or what can people expect from uh, Sharon, um, you know, and especially for SLS marketing consultancy and how do you actually plan to continue to stay relevant in the sort of um, environment that we now operate in? Yeah, well, I think it's really important actually that any business owner continues to keep an eye on their environment and what's happening and learning. You know, I'm a forever on a webinar, a learning course, buying a book, um, because of that need to consistently keep up to date and grow. Um, you know, AI is massive. Um, people are scared of it. I don't think, you know, anyone really truly knows how far we're going to go with it. But, you know, my, you know, how I approach anything, you know, whatever that new development, that latest development is, do lots of reading, ask lots of questions um, and see how you can apply it. You know, and, and people say to me, oh, Sharon, you work in AI, you must be scared because it's going to do all your copywriting for you. It's like, actually, AI could automate some more of my processes for me. Um, and actually, you know, sometimes I do go to AI and go, oh, I'm really struggling on how to articulate this. And I might put in something and get it. Doesn't mean I use it, but I'll I'll take the bare bones. So I think it's like anything, it's about making sure that I keep myself and the business relevant and up to date. And that is about, you know, being on top of things, talking to different people. And that's what I love about Evolution Virtual Networking, actually, is we have an international audience. So, yes, I'm based in the UK. And yes, you know, at least half the people are. But we have an international audience. And therefore, you're always learning, you know. And and I want the business to go to go forward. You know, I'm looking at how I can make SLS marketing accessible to more people. So, you know, I am looking at, dare I say, you know, webinars and courses and things like that to just reach more people, you know. Um, it's really important to me that if people want to to grow their business, marketing is accessible and good marketing. And I don't mean that with any um, negativity to other marketing consultants, but there's lots of people out there who say that they are can do marketing, but actually what they mean is they're really good at Instagram or they're really good at one thing. I'm talking about strategic marketing, you know, that whole strategic marketing piece. So um, that's why I'm looking at what else we can do, how else we can reach more people. Fantastic. Well, I can't thank you enough for the time that we've spent together on the show today, Sharon. Ah, thank you. It's been a pleasure to see you again and a pleasure to chat as always. Although I think I did more of the talking. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, that was the whole point of getting you on the show. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes our insightful conversation with Sharon Slate from SLS Marketing Consultancy. And I hope you've gained valuable knowledge about what to do when a shark is sported where you are swimming, but above all, about the importance of marketing strategies, personalized approaches, and the impact of having a community around you so you can create a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, thank you so much for joining us uh, on this episode of the Online Prosperity Show. I want you to stay tuned for more insightful conversations and please join Sharon's Evolution Networking every fortnight uh, on Thursdays. I'm still trying to get my calendar to um, play fair with the English calendar, but I think after daylight savings, I'll be able to get yeah, back to yeah, that. Definitely help. Fantastic. So until next time, I'm Prosper Tarwinga, and I'm wishing you a continued success and prosperity on all your endeavors. Bye for now.